Good morning, it's Lois. It is a beautiful Labor Day outside. For a while there I thought it was going to rain, but it's not. The sun has come out. And today I'm going to experiment with echo printing. I'm an artist, writer, and songwriter. I started this YouTube channel because I wanted to share with you some of my art and ideas and show you a little bit about what's going on here in St. Charles. If you watched my blog a couple of days ago, you would know that I met with a fellow artist, Diane Lawrence at Queenie Park, and she turned me on to something she's been doing called echo printing. I have all these leftover vegetables that I have not been eating from my uh, Lakeview Farms CSA and some of them are beets and carrots and I'm just going to experiment with a bunch of different flowers and leaves and stuff like that to see how this comes out. So there's no guarantee that it's going to come out but we're going to see how it goes. I do a lot of experimenting. This might be an epic fail, who knows. So here are my vegetables that I've cut up in small slices. I think the beets, I think the beets will do really well. Um, and I'm going to guess that this cabbage leaf will do really well, although I don't know how it's going to turn out. Um, I'm getting a lot of my information online. And I'm going to go out right now to our cottage garden and around Frenchtown and collect some flowers. This is my hubby's cottage garden. He's kind of taken it over from the previous owners. There's a bunch of wildflowers here that attract honey, uh, honeybees and butterflies and bumblebees. So I'm going to collect a combination of a bunch of leaves and different flowers to see if how they echo print. You can see I have a number of different items here. I have some leftover items from my CSA. Some homegrown beets. I'm going to try some okra. It's slimy and nasty, so it'll need to be washed off, but um, I'm going to see how it looks on there. I have some of this small eggplant. I'm going to see how this purple stuff on the out outer skin imparts color if any we're just going to monitor and then we have some of this uh, red cabbage we'll see how that goes we have some begonias from the uh, flower pots out front they're kind of sticky um, some hosta flowers the bumblebees love uh, hosta leaves we'll see how that goes I don't know if they're too too thick. Uh, I don't know how they'll do. Some of these flowers, I don't know what kind of flowers they are. This is all we had left. Our guard is kind of on the edge of being flowery. Um, it's about ready for fall. Some of these that the butterflies love. Uh, some roses. There's a couple of roses, but um, for the most part they're just kind of deadheaded a bunch. There's some nice red leaves. We'll see how they impart color. Some of this. Some black eyed Susan. Some cornflowers that are on their way out. I'm just going to keep track of what it is we decide to use and how it ends up looking in the end. This is a huge experiment. Could be an epic fail. We don't know. Um, what I have here is alum. So before we get started, I've collected all my, my plants and um, leaves and vegetables and I am going to try to experiment with them. This is just one big, big experiment. So I've read several different websites and I guess what turned me on initially was talking to Diane about her echo printing process. So I've been reading different people, blogs, and watching YouTube channels about how to do this properly. And I haven't really found a method that I think is going to work for me at this point. So I'm experimenting. It may be an epic fail. It may be a wonderful, happy accident, as Bob Ross likes to say. Just happy accident. 
Um, but what I'm going to start with and what I found is that you need to have some sort of a mordant in order to be able to get the silk to bond with the natural fiber, natural dyes. So what I'm going to use as a mordant is what I happen to have on hand. And I don't know if you can see this. This is called alum. And it's, it's basically just like the alum you get in the store, like in the spice section and the McCormick spices section um, on a larger scale. I have enough mordant here to last me probably a lifetime. I use this mordant for silk marbling, a process which I will show you in the future via uh, YouTube. But for now, I'm going to use this to try to play with my natural dyes. Um, the instructions according to Dharma, and I'm going to go with them first, is to use two teaspoons per gallon. I have two gallons of water here, of uh, hot water that came out of the faucet. So I'm going to put four, table, four teaspoons of mordant in this solution and uh, let it dissolve. And the consensus is the mordant helps, but you can all, if you use too much mordant on your fabric, uh, you, it'll, your fabric will start to deteriorate. So we're going to start with four, and we're going to just stir this around a little bit and see if we can get it to dissolve. Okay, so I put this alum in here with some hot water, and I stirred it around a little bit. Uh, I like to keep I like to keep all my silk stuff separate from my food stuff if I'm working in the kitchen. Um, alum I, is not really toxic; it's just I like to keep them separate is a uh, course of common practice just to keep them separate because some of the chemicals and dyes that you do work with are toxic and you don't want them being used for anything food related. What I have here are a bunch of selections of different types of silk and they are basically just scraps that I haven't used for um, wall hangings or whatever. Uh, here's a piece of Habitai silk, so we're going to try that because I noticed that a bunch of these uh, artists are using Habitai silk, so I'm going to throw that in this mix here and make sure that the silk gets a lot of coverage here. So we're going to make sure that all of this alum water makes sure it gets to every bit of the fabric. And we're just going to pile on top of each other. Here's a little thing of Charmeuse silk. These have already been treated in alum, but we're going to go ahead and treat them again. Um, just to get them wet. I have uh, some crepe de, chine, a crepe de chine blank. This scarf is already hemmed from Dharma Trading Company. It measures 14 inches by 60 inches. Um, it's crepe, again, it's crepe de chine. So we're going to try this. And I have here a scarf that I ordered last year and never used. It's a hand rolled scarf blank and it is a wool and silk mixture. Now I understand that the wool part of it causes some shrinkage when you wash it. Right now I think it's 14, it measures 14 by 60, or 72, so we'll see how that, if that actually does shrink, but I'm going to try it for this, because I want to see how the, naturals dye, how the natural dyes work on the wool as well. So we're going to stick that in there, we're going to make sure that everything's covered well um, and mixed to make it wet and soaked with this solution. And then I'm going to leave it in the solution until I'm ready to work with each scarf. I've squeezed my first scarf blank out. Uh, it is still wet and I laid it onto a half size sheet of 
newsprint rolled in half. So it's double ply basically. And it's still wet. So it's going to leave water spots all over the place. I'm not really worried about this at this point. I want it to be a little bit wet. What I'm going to start to do is I've laid the one half of this up and I've got the rest of it kind of just wadded up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my leaves and flowers out on this and then I'm going to fold it in half on top of it and roll it up. I'm going to start with these vegetables first and uh, lay them out and see what they look like. It might make it interesting. I don't know what it's going to turn out to be. We'll see. Here is everything as I have it laid out. I've kind of interspersed all my veggies together. So if it doesn't work, and it is a failed experiment, but we can eat them. I'm joking, I don't want to eat them. I'm not a beets person, so... Okay. And then we're gonna just stick that here. So we've got basically a half and half. So we just lay this over top, um, split in half here. So we'll basically have a, um, a reverse imprint on the back side of all of our vegetable items and it'll be half and half. Now I noticed that a lot of, of women who are demonstrating this like to use plastic and they let it sit in their steamer for a couple of hours at a very low heat. I'm going to attempt to do this in my silk steamer and as a result I don't really want to wrap it in plastic. So I'm just going to use this newsprint and roll it up in this newsprint uh, like I did my previous projects. And I just kind of make sure that it's flat. And then hope that it doesn't bleed through. Hope and pray that it doesn't bleed through. It might bleed through, I don't know. Um, we'll see when it comes out. And then we'll roll this into a snake coil and tie it. It helps to have the seam on the inside of the coil. That way you don't have any fabric coming out. Or your coil doesn't unravel. And see, because this is wet, it's going to break a little bit. It should be okay um, because we're going to unwrap this as soon as we pull it out. And as long as we make sure no water spots get on it, it's not that big of a deal. I, I don't think on this item just because it's already wet when we put it in there. Let me tie it up. I have this uh, crepe de chine one out and I decided to do the pink flowers. Um, so I did some roses and then these the roses had these red leaves that were just beautiful. I don't know how, how they're going to come out but um, probably they'll probably be yellow. And then these little flowers here they kind of look like hydrangeas but I'm not sure what they are. And then um, some leaves. So we've got pink and red here. Now whether or not they will actually impart that color as a natural dye, we don't know. We're going to see. So we, again, we do the same thing. And when I, when I put them down, I kind of put them down haphazardly. Uh, some of them are facing downward. Some of them are facing upward. This is a little bit longer, but I think we'll be okay because we'll just have kind of a blank space in the middle. Oh, we're a little bit longer, but that's all right. I'm going to fold this over like this, and then I'm going to roll this under like this. Again, we're doing the same thing. We're going to roll this up and then we're going to roll it up into a snake and do it carefully because this paper is wet and it will tear. Uh, 
Um, and then tie it up with uh, twine or cotton, and then we'll steam it next. Okay, ambient noise, apologies. Let me show you what I'm doing. I've got here, I've got a bunch of, of um, handkerchiefs. These are ladies' handkerchiefs that you can get from Dharma. And so I've got one laid out with a bunch of petunia petals and some of the uh, red cabbage. So I'm going to lay this other guy right side down on top of this one. So we'll have one with uh, front print, one, one with a reverse print. This guy here, this little piece of fabric that I had laid out, I thought I might use for silk under glass for some cabochons for necklaces. So I'm going to just use this piece up. I just laid it down some leaves and um, shredded some of the flowers. And I soaked, soaked this guy in some just regular black tea that I use for my iced tea. And uh, I, it's got a bit of an antique kind of aging. It sort of ages a little bit. So I'm gonna lay that over flat. And then this guy here, we decided to do the whole handkerchief. And um, to keep all these flowers from bleeding all over the place, I decided to lay down some tracing paper. So we'll see how this tracing paper works at keeping it off, uh, keeping the dyes off the rest of the fabrics. And so I'm going to roll all of these up together. Here's the final piece of fabric. This was just a piece of habitat that was raw. Um, we'll see how it goes. I put some of the hosta leaves down. I put some of the um, maple leaves down, some of the black-eyed Susans. Some of these hosta flowers are white. I don't know if they'll impart any color, but we'll see what happens with it. And then this goes, and the, this is all my fabric. So I'm going to roll this up, tie it, steam it, and I'll see you on the other side. We are unpacking the steamer to see how things turned out. This is the first piece I did. It smells like dinner. With all the vegetables. <laughs> kind of smells, yeah, too healthy. All right. Hot, hot, hot. Okay, this is really cool, actually. <clears throat> I used beets. If you remember when I put this together, I used beets and carrots. <laughs> oh my god, that's too funny. The This red cabbage actually did a really cool job. It uh, came out purple. purple. There was a straight okra. I decided against the okra. If you were watching me because it's just, it was just too slimy. I didn't want to work with it. So this came out really interesting. It doesn't really look organic. It doesn't have leaves, images per se. Um, that's kind of, it. that's cool. I really am impressed with how purple these cabbage leaves came out. Uh, and there might be a possibility for cutting them into flower shapes and getting them flat so that you can get this kind of purple flower effect. And then these, these flowers right here, these are the beets that I had. So they came out an orange kind of color, sort of a rust color. The carrots, 
kind of came out a just a very light orange yellowish color not too particularly exciting but they do add a little dimension to the piece because they're the, the carrot pieces are sort of square whereas the uh, beets and cabbage are more of organic shapes okay so this particular scarf was the wool silk blend and these were all the vegetables that I did cool I like that so it virtually came out purple and orange neat this kind of reminds me of doing clay and there was this even if, if, even if you're a great potter and you know what certain materials do, there's always that sense of anticipation when you open up the kiln for the first time after the items have been fired to see if, number one, they made it through without any damage, and number two, how it actually turned out. It's almost like you don't know what to expect. This is kind of like that. This is that feeling. You want to see if your experiment has worked. Okay, I don't remember what this one was. Let's see. This was also a scarf. This was the Crepe de Chine scarf. On the Crepe de Chine scarf, I used some of the purple flowers, a bunch of the leaves. And then there was that center section where I didn't have anything. That's okay. Um, it, coloring is a little bit lighter. So some of these light pink flowers lost all their color. There's really not that much pink here. They mostly turned like yellowish, greenish. There was a little bit of pink, pink coloring in the uh, in those tiny flowers and then these are what some of the leaves did you have like a very light leaf image I think these were the roses these were those red red spiky flowers I'm not sure what they were and they did they did impart quite a bit of that pink color sometimes when they when they get um, steamed the dye actually turns a different color but this one these kind of these red flowers came out red another thing I've seen people who do this do is they have a core of cardboard or PVC or even copper uh, where they can flatten it out a lot more so I don't have a lot of really good images on here per se. Just a little little bits and dabs of color. So this is the crepe de chine one with some pink and purple flowers. Me. Here here is the lady's handkerchief with the combination of the um, cabbage leaves, which are these, and the petunias, which are these kind of purplish, yellowish spots. And the petunias are kind of goo <laughs> gooey, icky. So you try to get up as much as, of that as possible. Um, you might not be able to get all of it off. Ultimately, we're going to wash these, and so um, it's not that big of a deal, but it's kind of yucky.
this is my favorite scarf out of all of the ones that came out. And this was um, this was the Habitai silk that was dipped in tea, and then I put maple leaves on top, maple leaves and hostas. And then I came back after it was all steamed and washed and I added some dyes to the edges. So it kind of looks almost like parchment. But rather than try to use it for anything else, I decided it would make a sufficient scarf in its own right. So I just clipped the ends, the fringy off the ends, and added some uh, a hand-rolled hem. And I'm going to sell this as a scarf. Thanks for joining me on this adventure. Like I said, it was an experiment, and I would say it wasn't an epic fail at all. I'm going to say it was a happy accident. I had a lot of happy ap accidents and projects I might take from this in the future. So, thanks for joining me, and here's to trying something new every single solitary day.